The technique of painting on clear glass so that the image is viewed from the other side has been practiced for centuries in cultures around the world. The glass provides permanent protection from wear and a durable, clear gloss finish. It has often been combined with gilding in religious artwork, on furniture items, and in clock making. Now where standard painting builds an image from the background forward, reverse painting requires a different thought process, as the artwork is created in a backward fashion. Foreground first, with each phase applied so that the background finishes the painting. Now today's lesson is going to demonstrate an easy and inexpensive way to create reverse paintings in a safe manner, using oil pastels instead of oil paint and acetate instead of glass. I'm also going to use a metallic foil backing that will reflect light back through the pastel in the same manner as gilding. So let's take a look at the materials first. This is a sheet of matte acetate. You can see that it's glossy on one side and it's a matte finish on the other side. That matte surface is textured just enough for drawing on. I cut a large 24 inch by 40 inch sheet into eight equal pieces. So this is about 10 inches by 12 inches. I'm also going to be using oil pastels. Now there's a number of different brands available, but I've chosen to use the Craypaw Expressionist Colors because they come in a variety of wonderful colors, they're non-toxic, and they're great to use with all ages. And lastly, I'm going to be gilding my painting with metallic foil paper. This comes in individual rolls of gorgeous color or assorted color sheets. Cut them down to the same size as the matte acetate. Now I have a sketch handy that I've made on tracing paper and I'm going to place it beneath the acetate. I'll place the acetate glossy side down with the matte surface facing up and I'm going to tape the edges down to the tabletop. This is going to help me in two ways. First of all, it's going to hold it in place as I draw, which will be a big help. And secondly, it's going to create a border around the edges that's going to be very useful when it comes time to attach the foil paper. Okay. Since oil pastels remain soft, you won't be building layers upon layers upon layers as you would with oil paint. You can do this pretty quickly, immediately. But I do recommend that you start with your lightest colors first because this will keep the colors clean and bright. The Expressionist pastels come with a colorless blender. That's this piece right here. You can use it, as I'm doing, to blend your colors together after you've laid them down. You can also use a soft cloth or a paper towel. Wrap it around your finger and gently, gently blend your colors together in this manner. The oil pastel colors can be laid down in an unblended manner side by side as I'm doing here. And this will give your painting a very impressionistic look. Now if I make a mistake or want to remove an error, I can come back in with the paper towel and with quite a bit of pressure I can move the color away like that or I can take a modeling tool such as this wooden modeling tool here that has a flat edge and just scrape the color away in this manner. All right, now that the drawing is complete, we're removing the tape and we're going to turn it over and take a look to see what it looks like from the reverse side and remove our sketch. There we go. It's always a very different look from the front than it is from the back. Now, take your foil and place it behind the drawing to see how it looks. Now you may wish to make some changes at this point. I would like to see a little bit more of the metallic coming through. So I'm going to take the foil back from behind, turn the drawing over, and come back in with my wooden tool again. And just scrape back to the acetate in a few areas here. Uh, maybe add some 
fun lines, some textures in the background, like so. Now I do happen to have a complete one over here that we can look at. Let's put the foil behind it again. There. Now I do like that a lot better. You can actually see the foil reflecting through the drawing much better. When it's complete, you'll want to attach it to the foil paper. The blank edge that we created with the masking tape is where the glue is going to go. The glue won't attach very well to the oil pastel itself, so it is very important to have that neutral area to apply the glue. Then we'll place the foil color side down against the drawing like so. There we go. Now the glue looks white, of course, because it's wet, but when it dries, it will be clear. It's very lightweight, so once the glue's dry, I probably want to mount this to a heavier piece of mat board or poster board to display it. Let's run through a couple of options. Before applying the metallic foil paper to the back, you can texturize it by gently crinkling the paper this way and then stretching it back out again. This example over here used that technique to get the very textured background that we can see there. You can also use multiple colors of metallic foil in the background, which makes for a very, very interesting composition. And if we take a look at this example over here, you can draw with a permanent marker on the gloss side of the acetate to define certain areas of the artwork. That's what's been done in the palm tree areas. Okay, now it's time for you to try reverse pastel painting. Go to dickblick.com backslash lesson plans to pick up the materials list and instructions in a PDF format. If you're a teacher, we've already listed the national standards for visual art education. I hope that helps make it a little easier for you. Thanks for joining us today.